Hi guys, welcome to the Sketchwork TV show, How Did They Do That? I'm your host, Justin Heesman. Sketchwork TV. This week we're going to be taking a look at the Terminator HUD effect from um, episode 5 of Sketchwork TV, which was called Terminated. Uh, I got destroyed. But hey. Hi guys, welcome to the hit film version of the Terminator HUD vision effect. Now, first thing we need to do is create a new, comp uh, new composite shot and drop your so footage down there. I've uh, created this uh, this one with uh, which was from episode five, the um, terminated. Now at the beginning, I've added a little um, extension on it, um, so literally a freeze frame. Um, I've just moved the frame around to give it a little bit of movement, so it doesn't look like it's a freeze frame. And uh, all I did there was use the speed effect, and, and then just manually um, keyframed some movement into that, and then we kick off. So that is a footage one. So drop your footage into a, into a new compos um, composite shot and that's that done. Now create a, a new composite shot and you want this one to be called visual grid overlay. I'm running in 25p, uh, 25p, uh, 720p. Uh, so that's all good. So okay that. And what you want to do is add a new plane. So right click, new layer, plane, and will be a white plane. I'm going to call this one visual grid. And create, there we go. And what you want to do, you want to drop on the grid effect here. So generate grid, drop him on. There we go, pretty good. And Let's just change some of these um, parameters here. So if we go to point one, we want to change the position. For me, I did 40 by 40. And the border radius, I dropped all the way down to two. So if we zoom in, there are quite lots of little small um, squares there, which is exactly what I wanted and works perfectly with my 720p footage. Okay, so now we're gonna start adding the target. So we're gonna go new, new composite shot. I'm going to call this one target and OK. I'm going to go a new layer and a new plane, new white plane. I'm going to call this one circle and create. And we'll drop on the polar warp effect on here, which creates a lovely circle there. Uh, and we can play around with lots of the settings here. Um, probably not what this was supposed to be used for, but it works great for creating HUD displays. Now, if we we want to change the start radius. So let's go to polar warp. And on the start radius, I'm going to turn to about 73.68 because I've already done this one before, so I know exactly how big it needs to be. And the end radius is going to be 71.68, which creates this little circle like that, which is exactly what I'm after. Um, we're going to create another white plane. So new layer plane, and this one's going to be called target rotator and create. Again, drop on the polar warp. And I'm going to change some of the settings again. So I'm going to go range, I'm going to change this to 20. And the start radius to, I'm going to change it to 84.68. And the end radius, I'm going to go 80.68. Six, eight. So it creates this uh, kind of effect here, which works great. Um, we're going to create four of these so that they go sort of around all of the different quadrants. So what we can do, we can right click and duplicate. And you can you can change this by um, just using, you know, rotating the layer. So if we go to the transform and go to the rotation, and you're going to move it around to 90 degrees, like so. And then again, duplicate. And move this one to 180. And then finally, duplicate. 
and move this one to 270. No, not 183. 270 there we go so that's now in um, all the four quadrants there which is exactly what I'm after now what you can do also here is um, you can create lots of different effects here um, like circles or uh, big quadrants small quadrants um, but what I want to do now because this is going to be my target we're going to add a crosshair to this So we're going to go new, I'm going to do a fire up using a plane again. So we're going to go horizontal line, create. I'm going to go to the scale and I'll whack the scale all the way down to about 0.5%. And the same with the about 25% on the vertical there. And again, new plane, equal this one vertical line, and okay. This is very rough, but you get you get the idea of, of what I'm trying to trying to get across here. Uh, this one, we're going to put this one down to about 0.5. And whack that across a bit. Like so. Which works great. Yeah, and I think, you know, you, you can add some animation to this if you want to using the rotation um, for these. So, you know, you, you could go um, uh, bring down the, the you know, keyframe the rotation and go forward a little bit and uh, and, and, and change it. It's, it's entirely up to you just to make these move around. Um, and then, you know, once they're keyframe, just do all four of them and that, and that will be fine. And that, that could look quite good. Um, but for now, I'm just going to keep it static because we're going to do some animation on the next section. Now, if we go, we're going to go new composite shot. And this one's going to be called Spinning Gizmo. And OK. There we go. Now, this it works exactly the same way as the uh, target that we just created. So first of all, we need to we're going to create a few circles and stuff. Uh, easiest thing to do is go to the first target and just copy the circle. So go copy, and then you can dump that in here. Paste. There we go. That was easy. Um, you can duplicate that and just you know change a, a couple of things. You can, but because we've got the circle here, we can just it simply change the scale now. So if we go to scale and we can up that a bit. There we go. And uh, you can then duplicate that again. And again, scale something like that. So we've got a good few different uh, circles there. Now we're going to create a new plane. And we're going to call this rotator. There we go. Uh, drop on the polar warp. And I'm going to play with some of these settings. So about that. So it's right in the middle of those three circles we just created there. Um, and we can play with the range a bit. Uh, maybe yeah, do a similar thing to what we did before, actually. Uh, duplicate that. Could copy it from the other one. Uh, I'll copy the polar warp effect, though. Oh, nice, it's already there, so that's okay. And the rotation, we can move that 90 degrees. Like something like that. I'm going to decrease this to about 33, I think. And duplicate. Like 
180. Duplicate. Warp to 70. There we go. So we've got those there now, and I will make these ones spin. So let's uh, let's create, um, go onto the rotation, create a keyframe for the rotation, transform, rotation, and uh, we're going to make it spin round, I don't know, say five times. That works okay. So I'm going to get this right. Rotator, rotator, rotator. So they're all parented together. So now they're all spinning round. Okay, so there we have our spinning gizmo. Um, you can play around with that to your heart's content. I, I do recommend looking at um, Marjar's. Um, he did a, a HUD tutorial uh, where he also used things like the motion trails here. Um, to create some nice HUD effects. So I do recommend checking that out. Now, we need to now move on to the actual scanner itself. So let's go a new composite shot. Call this one scanner. And OK. I'm going to create a new plane, a white plane. I'm going to call this one grid. And OK. I'm going to drop the grid effect onto it again. Let's drop the grid effect on. There we go. And change some of these settings. So we're going to go and change. And I've already done this, so I kind of know what they're supposed to be. But this is going to be minus 51.5 by minus 51.5. Not much of a change, but it works for my project. And this one is going to be 63 by 50. I'm going to change the border radius down slightly to about four. And then the overall layer, because I want this to be positioned in the bottom corner, because that's that's not, not what, it, what it's doing at the moment. So transform, um, we're going to play with the scale. So let's turn off uniform a minute. And I'm going to go to the position. I'm going to change the position to about 414.3 by minus 205.7. So it's down there. And then the scale, I'm going to go 22.5 by 30.6 and it's now in the bottom corner which is exactly where I want it to be which is perfect now we need to create some scan lines now so we're going to go over and uh, I'm going to do this by creating some uh, another new plane so new plane I'm going to call this horizontal scan line and create there we go and we're going to play with a scale and the position again. So turn off uniform and scale is going to be 22.2 by about 0.5. And my position, I'm going to go for uh, 416 by minus 98. And what it's doing, I mean, you can do it by hand. I just, because it was trial and error before. You want to position this one directly on the top line here. So that's going to be your scan line. Now you're going to go forward on this one. So from from uh, from position zero, frame zero, I want you to uh, click a position keyframe. So position. And I'm going to go forward uh, about a second. And we're going to move this all the way to the bottom. So you can do it by hand, or if you know the coordinates, great. Um, so that's now right in the bottom there. And then what you can do, we want this to go up and down, up and down. So we then go to two seconds. And we can copy and paste these two keyframes. So Control C and then paste them. And uh, this makes your life easier. So now that line is going to go up, down, up, down, which is perfect for what we want. Now you're going to create another new plane. This one's going to be called vertical scan line and OK that. Again, go to the transform controls, turn off this uniform scaling. And the scale is going to be not for the 0.3 by 30.5. 
and the position for me on this one is 275 by minus 206 and that positions it right there actually i'm going to move it over a little bit more there we go um which is great same as before you want to create a position keyframe so at zero which is where we are and you could do it every second but i i don't want it to be exactly the same as the one before so i'm going to go for about one and a half seconds on this one and I'm going to create a new position with it all the way over the other side. There we go. And again, you can copy and paste these now. So you go to position about three seconds and paste and so on. Six seconds and paste. So now they sort of do their own thing. This looks a bit better than if they were both going uniform up and down, up and down, left and right uh, in, in sequence. So that's great. That works for me. Um, but, you know, you might have different ideas. Entirely up to you. Now, uh, we can, we've got this nice scanny grid in the corner. The next thing we need to do is add our gizmos. So we've already created those. So we can go to our gizmo, spinning gizmos and dump them on here. Now they're pretty big at the moment, so we're going to need to scale that down a little. And do that transform. So let's scale it down. Let's try about 40%, which looks pretty good. And shove that in the top right hand corner. And you want to duplicate this a few times. So duplicate, move it down. Duplicate. And I want this four times, so I'm going to do another two. And final one, duplicate, and move it right down. Now, at the moment, they're all going to be moving in exactly the same time with each other, which, yeah, you may want that, but I don't particularly want that. So if you look at that, they're going to be all moving exactly the same. Maybe okay, maybe not. Easiest way to get around this is just change the rotation on each of those. So it's just, first one could be zero, next one... Uh, rotation say so you don't need to keyframe these because they're already keyframed in the in the spinning gizmo and um, composite shot and next one and rotation I don't know about 90 95 and so 30 95 and then last one about 150. So now they're all slightly different, slightly off of each other, which is better because it looks a little bit less um, ah, uniform, which we don't want. Good. So that is the scanner finished. So in inside this composite shot, you can also add things like uh, text or uh, pie charts, bar charts, compasses, you name it. You shove it all in here. Anything you want to appear on the computer screen, you put on this uh, composite shot here, and then they'll all be composited together later, and it will have the same effect applied to them all. Now, if you put loads of these effects on your computer, on, 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 the, on your composite shot, it can slow your computer down because there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, so, you know, it might be, it might be handy sometime to maybe, once you're happy with these gizmos in here, maybe uh, render these out separately and then pull them back in as a actual piece of footage as opposed to calculating everything all the time. Um, just a tip, might, might be good. If you've got a super fast machine, don't worry about it. It's great. Okay, right.